<clears throat> Good morning, Prof. Good morning to you. How are and you? And how are you? Well, thanks. Well, thanks. You look very well, eh? I can see you look smarter. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Old age would not allow me. <laughs> no, 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 no. Man never gets old. You, see? Yeah. <laughs> you look very young. Younger uh, than your age. <laughs> no, it's this committee that keeps me young. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, thanks very much, Prof. I'm glad to see you. No, good. Good. Same here. Yeah. Advocate Romano. Good morning, Chair. How are you today? I'm good, and how are you? I'm good. I'm waiting for your instructions. Yeah, you, you, you can start. It's uh, self pass already. Okay, thank you. And how is Advocate Guevo? Is he well? I'm, I'm okay, Chair. Good morning, uh, and good morning to honorable members. No, it's good, it's good. Then uh, if you are well, uh, we are blessed, all of us. Uh, honorable members, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, let me just say uh, in opening that the ad hoc committee on the amendment of section 25 has no room for winners and losers amongst us. The failure to give and take amongst us will require all political parties represented in parliament to put the interest of South Africa and her people first. As chairperson, I gave all of you the opportunity to hold bilaterals and to seek fresh mandates based on the outcome of bilaterals from your principles. From today onwards, we are going to listen to the inputs of all political parties on each and every subsection of section 25 to determine our agreements or disagreements. Recording a, in progress. If a party doesn't pro pronounce itself on any of these sections, we will assume that they agree with proposals of those who will have expressed themselves. I deliberately stayed out of your bilaterals because as chairperson, I represent the interests of all political parties, regardless of their size. I am obliged by the constitution to act without fear and favor and to consider the contribution of all political parties, regardless of their size, on their merits or demerits. Now, just to refresh our memory and to the best of my recollection, I think that uh, we should finalize the following matters and then draft the amendment. The first matter relates to the deprivation versus expro expropriation uh, and the regulation thereof. The second is the state custodianship versus multiple forms of tenure. The next is the jurisdiction of the courts the next is nil versus without compensation. And the last is the cut of uh, dates. And I think all these matters are not too complex for us to resolve, uh, provided we don't put our party political interest first, but the interest uh, of South Africa. Because I cannot believe that uh, the people of this country can wait for another 25 years for the resolution of these uh, 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 problems. And uh, the current law reform processes have uh, many observers say that uh, have failed. And uh, if we don't deliver the amendment, it means we will be left with a law reform process, which uh, experts say has not delivered. And that will plunge this country into a crisis. And I don't think that uh, we have the luxury to plunge the country to a crisis. So I want to appeal to all of you that uh, there is nothing that is before us, which is, uh, cannot be resolved by us if we work together as patriotic 
South Africans. So uh, I'm happy that uh, all of you have had more than enough time to hold bilaterals, to reflect. And when we closed the meeting last time, we said that uh, uh, members should go back and revise their positions. So we are starting from that premise that we have revised your, uh, your, your positions to be, be, to be able to come to a consensus uh, on these uh, matters. And I, I want to thank you for your audience. And uh, I uh, will then open the floor for those who want to address us. And actually, now we should be moving away from just debates, loose debates and con concepts. We should go on how do we see the amendment looking like? So after any input, people must also say, this is how the amendment should look like so that we engage on that and move forward. Uh, I don't see any hand. Uh, Honorable uh, Lusuma, uh, the floor is yours. Thank, thank you, Honorable Chair, and good morning, colleagues. Uh, um, I've had, we, we have had you, Chair. Uh, I'll start by saying that uh, we will then present again, but we'll follow the, your directive to say pet laws and wait for support and a mover, and then we'll proceed. But what we are going to do, not to do, Chair, is to again and again motivate why are we inserting these clauses for the purpose of today's meeting? Because we have been doing it the last um, four meetings, if I'm not mistaken, and Honorable Kaba has been doing that one very uh, eloquently. Uh, uh, am uh, I correct by I, uh, uh, I, I agree with your approach, uh, Honorable Chair. I agree with your approach and uh, proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I was just uh, dealing with the, with the gadget for the volume. Chair. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, in terms of, of, of the, uh, in, uh, I'm, I'm presenting the ANC proposed text as presented before by Honorable Baba Chair. Uh, on okay. the preamble, no amendment proposed by the ANC. I'll wait for you, Chair, to ask if members, they do agree with that. Uh, maybe you should no. proceed. If any member does not agree, they should just indicate. But uh, so okay. we, don't to, we don't want to yeah. interrupt you. Yeah, somebody speaking? Yeah, like let the ANC present its own the whole section and then we'll indicate that we don't agree with the whole section. We can't, we can't go section by section. Uh, you want them to present the whole, eh? and then other parties can then respond to the whole as well. Uh, Honorable Suma, are you happy with that? No, I, I'm fine, Chair. Let's proceed, Chair. Okay. Let's go to uh, Section 25.1, no amendment proposed by the ANC. Section uh, uh, 25.2, I'll read as a whole, and then members will note what the ANC have inserted, but I'll also highlight those uh, ways. Uh, um, subsection 25.2b, subject to compensation, the amount of which and the time and the manner of payment of which have either been agreed to by those affected or decided or approved by, the, by a court. Provided that where land and any improvements thereon are expropriated for the, we are inserting the purposes of land reform as contemplated in subsection eight, we are inserting as contemplated in subsection eight, the amount of compensation is, may be, we are inserting is, may be, nil. We mm. move, Chair. Yes. Section 25.3, the amount of compensation as contemplated in subsection 2B, we are inserting 
as contemplated in subsection 2b, and the time and the manner of the payment must be just and equitable, reflecting an equitable balance between the public interest and the interests of those affected, having regard to all relevant circumstances, including the current use of the property, be it the history of the acquisition and use of the property, C, the market value of the property, D, the extent of direct state investment in subsidy and subsidy in the acquisition of beneficial capital improvement of the property, E, and the purpose of the expropriation. We continue by inserting after subsection, subsection three of the following subsection, which is 3A. For the furtherance of land reform, national legislation must, comma, subject to subsection two and three, set out specific, we're inserting specific circumstances where a court may determine that, we're inserting a court may determine that the amount of compensation is nil. We will proceed here, we'll go to subsection four. By, um, we're saying here, we're inserting after four, the following subsection. That's a new uh, 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 insertion. insertion. The land is the common heritage of all citizens that the state must safeguard for future generation. We proceed further, Chair, to five subsection five, five, uh, 25 five. The state must take reasonable legislative and other measures within its available resources, comma, to foster conditions which enable state custodianship of certain land in order for what in certain state custodianship of certain land in order for citizens to gain access to land on equitable basis. Section 25.6, no uh, uh, um, uh, pro amendment proposed by the ANC. Subsection 25.7, no amendment proposed by the ANC. Subsection 20, uh, 25.8, no amendment proposed by the ANC. Subsection 9, no amendment proposed by the ANC for now chair thank you very much we have noted that you have also you. articulated the areas we should uh, 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 comment on we have done that and uh, we leave it for uh, at that for now chair thank you very much that's the submission formally tabled before the committee a uh, proposed text from the anc thank you very much chair thank you honorable lesuma uh, <clears throat> I see Honorable uh, Dr. Lottery. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, I will also do the same in terms of the different proposed amendments, um, in terms of the amendment bill that was gazetted, as well as the ANC proposals that um, Honorable Lesoma now discussed. Chairperson, I will go through the Constitution as well. Um, the DA does not propose any change to 25.1. In terms of the proposed 25.2, um, the DA is concerned with these amendments in the bill. Um, this is now <clears throat> the uh, Gazetta bill as well as the ANC proposal, centers on the fact that the court's role in the determination of when compensation is null is replaced by national legislation, such as is indicated in 3A. This takes away any protection property owners may have when their property is expropriated. National legislation has a much lower threshold for approval, and it opens the door for arbitrary circumstances to be determined for when the compensation may be null. The Constitution as it stands, and Honorable Lusuma has read it, provides for specific circumstances, and any legislation should be measured against those circumstances to determine its constitutionality. The insertion of land and any improvements Recording there that may be expropriated with no compensation, if it is for the purpose of land reform as it now stands, is extremely wide and problematic. This places the property owner at an absolute disadvantage, especially in the if the role of the courts is reduced. 
because land reform could now be used as the uh, reason for any expropriation. The following questions, uh, Chairperson, have to be answered in order to evaluate these proposals, the Gazette as well as the ANC's proposals. <clears throat> and um, I also have to, in this regard, refer back to the ANC's original resolution at the 2017 Congress, where it was stated quite clearly that there should be no economic harm, um, um, the economy, the economic security and stability and growth of the country should not be affected, as well as food security. So the question is, um, whilst we're discussing this, um, has any macroeconomic analysis been done on the effect this would have on the property market? If it has been done, who did it and what was the finding? Has an analysis been conducted on the financial implications these amendments will have? As far as I know, the submissions that we received indicated that it will have dire financial implications for the country. Is there any clarity as to who will be held responsible for any bonds on properties? What will happen in instances where property has been used as collateral for loans and or bonds? These are things that must have, we, have, we must have clarity on before we can add that into the constitution. So therefore, Chairperson, we do not support the proposals made <clears throat> in 25.2 based on the diminishing role of the courts in the expropriation pr base, uh, process on the grounds that the determination cannot be left to national legislation, which in effect provides for an open-ended list of circumstances, as well as the total uncertainty of the financial implications these amendments would have on the South African property market and the economy at large and the financial sector. Now, there is, um, and we've also addressed the fact that um, in terms of the Gazetted Bill, um, in terms of 3A, that um, this must uh, be done by national legislation, which we find is too wide, too subjective, and that would open it up for uh, reasonable arbitrary decisions um, with a very low threshold. Now, in terms of the ANC's new proposed uh, insertion of 4A, saying the land is the common heritage of all citizens that the state must safeguard. Um, let me just go to, yes, so uh, maybe I should just retract chairperson and just say that uh, we do not propose any- I'm sorry, uh, I shall the An amendment to 25.3, we propose that it remains as is. If we look at the new 25.4a, the land is the common heritage of all citizens yeah. that the state and God for future generations. Um, the following questions still need to be answered uh, with this uh, proposal. What is meant by safeguard? How must the state safeguard the land as common heritage? What is the implication thereof? Is land limited to citizens' right to own land? Does it imply that the state can decide who should have access to land and who not? And does this give the state custodianship in effect for perpetuity in terms of what happens to land. So the proposal is ambiguous and is open to abuse. People can be denied tenure in the name of safeguarding land for future generations, and therefore the DA cannot support this proposed subsection. Uh, we believe that uh, this should not be included, and that section 25.4 as is, A and B should stand. The ANC further proposes an insertion of subsection 5, that the state must take reasonable and legislative um, and other measures within its available resources to foster conditions which enable state custodianship of certain land in order for citizens to gain access to land on an equitable basis. Now, the problem that we have is firstly, Chairperson, that we believe that this falls without the mandate of this ad hoc committee um, as given to it by the National Assembly. Custodianship is a material and substantive addition to the amendment, and therefore we believe it has to be referred to the NA and to go through a process of public participation as it was not included in the bill as gazetted in December 2019. We also look at the original uh, section 25.5, and there it is, and we agree with that, that the state must Recording take reasonable and other measures within its available resources to foster conditions which enable citizens, so it's citizens in general, now it is limited to state custodianship 
We do not agree with it because it um, materially changes the meaning and intention of Section 25.5. We are also not, even though we think it is outside of our mandate, we are not in favour of custodianship um, because we are concerned about um, that certain land must be identified for custodianship. We, how will that be decided? What will be, the, what will be certain land? Um, what will be the processes? What will be the inputs by the, the, the people, the actual people on the ground? Um, so there are so many open-ended questions still, Chairperson, that we cannot support amendments where there are more answers then we have questions and we cannot, as and I'm now saying and, and couching it in your words, Chairperson, make patriotic decisions in the interest of the citizens of South Africa if, if all these questions are still hanging in the air. So we do not support the Amendment 25.5. We believe it should stay as is. We also do not believe that sections 25, 6, 7, 8 or 9 have to be amended. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable <clears throat> Dr. Lodwig. Uh, I see here, uh, Honorable Shibambo. No, thank you, Chair. Uh, so I'm gonna go section by section. And so the current sub section one uh, reads, no one may be deprived of property. Yeah. Is someone else who's speaking when I'm speaking? Yeah, I don't know who that person is. Uh, can everybody mute, please? Uh, proceed. So the current subsection one reads, uh, no one may be deprived of property except in terms of law of general application, and no law may permit arbitrary deprivation of property. So we say, Let's keep that as is because uh, deprivation can be used of or, uh, uh, in context through law. And then the current subsection two reads, says the property may be expropriated only in terms of law of general application. Uh, and that A, it says for public purpose or in the public interest and B, subject to compensation, the amount of which and the time and manner of payment of which have either been agreed to by those affected or decided or approved by a court. Mm -hmm. We then are proposing that it must read as follows, that it must say property may be expropriated without compensation. And A will be only in terms of law of general application and B for a public purpose or in the public interest. And then the current subsection three, speaks of the amount of the composition and the time and manner of payment must be just and equitable, reflecting an equitable balance between the public interest and the interest of those affected, having regard to all regard the all relevant circumstances, including the current use of the property, the history of the acquisition and use of the property, the market value of the property, the extent of direct state investment and subsidy in the acquisition and beneficial capital improvements in the property and the purpose of expropriation. We propose that that section, the entirety of it, must be deleted. If there are circumstances that they have to be dealt with in terms of compensation, no compensation, which was saying that property may be expropriated without compensation, that will be subject to law of general application, not in the constitution. So our firm proposal, which has been consistent since the beginning of this process, is that subsection three must fall completely. And then the current subsection four, uh, it says for the purpose of this section, the public interest includes the nation's commitment to land reform and to reforms to bring about equitable access to all South Africa's natural resources. And that property is not limited to land. Then because we have deleted subsection three, our subsection, the current subsection for in, in our proposal then becomes subsection three. It's going to retain the first two parts, A and B, and then it is going to add a new C, which reads as follows. Land is a natural resource 
and the common heritage of all the people under the custodianship of the state. That is what uh, it says. And I want to repeat that, that land is a natural resource and the common heritage of all the people under the custodianship of the state. So we must establish custodianship. We must not uh, uh, say it is going to be established later through legislation. It must be established in this constitutional amendment. And then the current uh, subsection 5 says that the state must take reasonable legislative and other measures within its available resources to foster conditions which enable citizens to gain access to land on an equitable basis. Now, in our sections now, it is subsection 4 because we have deleted subsection 3. It then must read as follows to say, the state must take reasonable legislative and other measures which enable state custodianship and for citizens to gain access to land on an equitable basis. That is uh, in terms of uh, our proposal. And then the current subsection 6 reads as follows. It says a community or a person whose tenure of land is legally insecure as a result of past racial, racial discriminatory laws or practices is entitled to the extent provided by an act of parliament, either to tenure which is legally secure or compatible with dress. Now that appears as subsection 5 now in our proposed amendment because subsection 3 has been deleted and we're saying that there must not be changes in that uh, section. The current subsection 7 of the constitution reads as follows. It says a person or community dispossessed of property after 19 June 1913 as a result of past racial discriminatory laws or practice is entitled to the extent provided by an act of parliament, either to restitution of that property or to equitable redress. And then in terms of our proposal of the cut-off date, we are saying that it must read as follows. A person or community dispossessed of property as a result of past racially discriminatory laws or practices is entitled to the extent provided by an act of parliament, either to restitution of that property or to equitable redress. So we then remove the date and the and the and the section still makes sense even outside of the 19 June uh, date in terms of uh, what happens. And then the uh, current subsection eight in the current constitution reads as follows. It says, no provision of these sections or this section may impede the state from taking legislative and other measures to achieve land, water, and related reform in order to redress the results of past racial discrimination, provided that any departure from the provisions of these sections is in accordance with provisions of section 36.1. Then we are saying that that now which appears in our amendment as subsection 7 must be retained without changes. And then our, our, our subsection 8 now, which is the current subsection 9, says that parliament must enact the legislation referred to in this section, meaning that all the aspects of custodianship, of land tenure, of restitution, there has to be legislation that is utilized to affect that as laws of general application. So the consequence of that, obviously, will be to then, through legislation, have a clearer contextualization of the custodianship and thereafter redistribution of land on an equitable basis. And then there must be legislation that secures tenure for those that are occupying certain properties for residential purposes, for agricultural purposes, for industrial purposes, for religious purposes, for recreational purposes, for whatever purposes that are occupying the land or property for. So the tenure issue will be dealt with through separate legislation. And of course, the constitution already gives a direction towards 
that uh, that level of of security of tenure. But we are of the firm view that custodianship should be established in the current constitution, not to say uh, it will be looked into case by case or it is going to be certain parts of land. We think that we should guarantee custodianship of all of South Africa's land on behalf of all the people. And that still has to guarantee security of tenure for those that are using land for different purposes. And custodianship is not nationalization of land. The state is holding on behalf of the people. The AgriSA vis-a-vis Minister of Mineral Resources a constitutional court ruling clarifies the difference and distinction between custodianship and nationalization of property or of land uh, when it was dealing with the issue of minerals. So that is the context of our proposal and its final uh, in terms of our submissions. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Shibambo, can you clarify uh, us on this issue? If you talk about custodianship, that the all the land and mineral resources must be in the hands of the state. But you are at the same time saying that uh, there must be security of tenure. And you, at the same time, accept that there must be restitution. Are you saying that even the land that is resti- already restituted to people and the people who have been given security of tenure, that land must also go back to the state? Is that what you are saying? No, Chair, so this is the context of what happens. We are establishing custodianship. And then if we had an old order title, like let's say it was a freehold title, which we had either through restitution, which you were given, you convert that to the new tenure system that acknowledges that under normal circumstances and under different conditions, This land which I'm occupying is under the custodianship of the state, but because I've been using this land for residential purposes, for agricultural purposes, I'm going to convert this tenure into a separate, a different tenure system. In the same way, it happened with the mineral rights. You remember that when the MPRDA was enacted into a law, there were people who were already mining and they had to convert their old order rights into new order rights but continue to do, to do mining in their own spaces. And we are raising this because if you think you are going to expropriate property or land piece by piece, you are going to have a long litigious process which is going to deprive you of an opportunity to quickly and equitably redistribute the land because everyone else whose land parcel is targeted for expropriation is going to take you to court and you have seen with the demonstration of public work submission that sometimes such a process will take a minimum of seven or even eight years to just redistribute one piece of land. So when we establish custodianship, we still guarantee security of tenure for those that are using the land. And if it is irrational, if you have got 30,000 hectares of land which is far low, is not being used for anything, and then you say that I want to retain the ownership and control of this land, then the state must rightfully say that we need to give this land to other people for equal use in terms of what happens. But also what that does, it it makes easier the question of public purpose and in, 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 in the public interest. Because you remember that one of the frustrations of the state was the inability to even put public infrastructure across individual people's farms. We would say that this is my farm. You cannot put a power line you cannot put a road, you cannot put a, a water project, you cannot do anything because this is my property, it's fenced, I've got a title deed, I was given by my uh, great-grandfather called Jan van Rabik, who conquered and took the land from your forefathers, now you're not allowed to build the road here. It belongs to me. And that is what we need to change decisively, that for public papers mm-hmm. and public mm-hmm. interest, there must not be negotiation in terms of utilising this particular land. And these are the necessary long overdue reforms uh, that have to be effected so that we've got a, a clearer legislative framework that will guide a new discourse of land reform. The piece by piece expropriation and redistribution approach 
has dismally failed and will never succeed. It will take us another 50 years to redistribute just 30% of South Africa's land. That is the context of it. Security of tenure otherwise is guaranteed for those that are occupying for residential purposes in particular. Okay, thank you very much for clarifying us. Uh, I see Wayne iPhone. Who is that? Wayne has iPhone. Uh, chair. Yes. Hello. Yes. Oh, sorry, Chair. Just just having some challenges. Uh, it's it. It's member Wayne Thring from the ACDP chair. Oh, thank you very much. Proceed. Uh, th thank you, thank you, Chair. Chair, I think no, I think that the position of the ACDP is is, is a fairly simple one. But firstly, let me just, uh, uh, as you indicated, you've you've mentioned that um, political parties that uh, do not uh, comment, uh, uh, it would be taken for granted that they would accept. Uh, the position that has been forwarded by the uh, by the ruling party, I think, in this case, in your in your preamble, uh, my question not firstly would be: What about those sorry. political parties sorry, um, that sorry. are not present? Um, just, uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Wayne, just a correction. I didn't say that uh, those who don't uh, express themselves will be bound by the position of the ruling party. I say that applies across the board. That if you make a proposal and then the ruling party or any other party uh, don't count it it means it stands so it's not uh, limited to any one party thank you proceed all right uh, thank you chair but then uh, the the acdp's position chair has been has is, is a fairly uh, simple one I think from the outset, the ACDP has uh, had a challenge in terms of the amendment of uh, Section 25 of the Constitution. We have from the outset indicated uh, that the amendment of the Constitution in the view of the African Christian Democratic Party uh, was, was not necessary. Um, we understand, however, that uh, the, the mandate was given to this particular committee to look at reviewing Section 25, and the ANC have, have done just that together with the EFF and maybe uh, the uh, Freyhays Front is just one inclusion by the, Frey, uh, by the Freedom Front. Uh, that being said, Chair, because of the position of the ACDP, uh, it is the view of, of the, our party that from a legal as well as a constitutional perspective, it was certainly not necessary to amend Section 25 of the Constitution. Uh, and hence the draft const uh, the, the draft expropriation or this expropriation bill um, uh, which looks at uh, the issues of catering for land um, in the view of the ACDP uh, we we certainly do not view expropriation of of land amending section 20 with no compensation amending section 25 of the constitution uh, as the route that should that should be followed. Um, hence, Chair, I think very simply, with all of the amendments uh, that have been made by both the ruling party as well as the uh, the Freedom Front, um, as well as the um, FF Plus, uh, the ACDP's position still stands that the Section 25 of the Constitution deals adequately with uh, restitution. Uh, and it is possible to ensure that there's equitable restitution uh, where necessary, where land has been unjustly dispossessed from our people in South Africa, uh, that there was certainly no need to amend Section 25. Um, we needed to just get our processes uh, in line. We needed to ensure uh, that we followed due process with what is already within Section 25 of the Constitution. As, as well as other, uh, other acts or as well as other laws uh, that, and other bills that we, that we have uh, that, that will allow for expropriation of, um, of land uh, where land can be equitably and justly distributed. So in short, Chair, uh, the ACDP's position is that we do not accept the amendments uh, that have been put forward 
which will uh, allow for Section 25 of the Constitution to be changed. Thank you, Chair. So are you, in other words, saying that uh, all the people that were violently dispossessed of their land should then buy that land back uh, through the state coffers? Is that what you are saying? Hello? We, Chair, we, we, are not, we are not saying that. We, we, are, Chair, we are saying that we believe that there are adequate procedures where if, if the state feels that land uh, was unjustly dispossessed, uh, that there are court processes as well that can be followed within the ambits of what we currently have. Uh, without without changing and amending the constitution. So we do believe that land that has been unjustly dispossessed from those in South Africa, um, there, there, there are sufficient measures currently that we have without amending section 25 of the constitution uh, that will allow for that particular land uh, to be restored. And even if necessary, and if the court determines without compensation. Okay, thank you for that clarity. Uh, who else? I can't see uh, Advocate Raman. Any other hand there? There is, uh, there is uh, Honorable Hanif and Honorable Hanif. Uh, yes, let the person proceed. I can't see. Uh, Honorable Chair, it's Honorable Hanif Hendricks of Al Jamaa. Can I proceed with your permission? Yes, proceed. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, uh, we have sent a copy of the Al Jamaa proposal on all the uh, 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 amendments uh, that have been proposed and um, uh, that will be sent to your office. However, I would like to speak on it. Uh, first of all, to say that uh, the constitutional amendment on, on expropriation is before parliament and is most probably one of the most contested pieces of law in South Africa's uh, history. Having said that, we have carefully looked at the proposals of the ANC after three years of hard work and obviously the ANC took into consideration the input uh, of other political parties and Al Jamaa supports uh, all the amendments of the ANC in this regard. Um, Honorable uh, Chair, uh, land reform is wrongly premised on European instead of African jurisprudence tenure and this must be modified so that we can have proper land reform. There is a misdistribution as a result of wrongful disposition of land, and this must be addressed in terms of African jurisprudence in our view and not European uh, distribution. And when I talk about African distribution, remember South Africa is not Africa. It's only part of Africa. So we have to look at it at that, in, in that particular uh, context. We are concerned after having uh, uh, given our support to the ANC amendments that section 235 of, of the constitution with regard to self-determination, uh, that must be taken into account because it should not impact, have any impact on the amendments uh, before you uh, uh, of the ANC, which we support. Uh, 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 so we just want to bring uh, that to your attention. We do not want section 235 and relevant sections uh, to trump uh, the, uh, 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 the struggle uh, to redistribute land that was uh, wrongly acquired. Honorable, honorable uh, uh, Chairman, uh, with regard to section 25.2, uh, uh, we would we agree largely with the amendment of the ANC, but uh, 
which read subject to compensation, the amount of which and the time of manner of payment of which have either been agreed to or by those affected or decided approved by a court, provided that where land improvement there are appropriated for the purpose uh, of land reform as compensated in section eight, the amount of compensation may be null. We however feel that uh, it mustn't be approved by a court, it must be approved by legislation. And uh, the reason for that, honorable chair, is that, you know, we're busy with this amendment for three years. The country is waiting, we need to fast track uh, 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 distribution. Uh, if the matter is in the hands of the, of the court, uh, uh, every individual uh, 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 property that is being looked at, uh, uh, it may take years and the courts will be undated uh, with uh, applications and uh, we will never be able to start the process of distribution now. Uh, the argument is now, if there's legislation, will it speed it up? I say yes, because there are checks and balances in Parliament. You can, you can put uh, oral questions, you can put written questions, you can call for a debate. Uh, there are petitions to be made. So whereas all that is not possible when it comes to the courts, you know, you have to wait for to be on the court role, you've got to wait your turn. Whereas where there's legislation, Parliament can play an active role uh, to fast track uh, 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 restitution. Um, I refer to wrongfully the dispossession. I know that we mustn't put our party position, that we must speak here in the interest of the country. However, you know, uh, my faith is Islam, and, uh, you know, I cannot ignore that that governs my beliefs. Uh, it's not necessarily my party's beliefs. Uh, but in Islam, if, if land is wrongly distributed, even if it's a few sands, those sands must be given back to the rightful owner. And the person who is redistributed, it must go around three times his neck uh, as punishment. Uh, that is very radical, but uh, you know, I, I'm just putting that on the record that we mustn't treat the disposition, a wrongful disposition of land as kid stuff. It was a serious violation and it was a crime against humanity and in South Africa, a crime against South Africans. Honorable Chair, we differ with the ANC on section 25.3. They talk about national legislation. And uh, uh, we agree, yes, national legislation, number one, to decide the steps on which uh, now land must be uh, taken back. And also a national, national legislation to decide uh, 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 on the compensation, which can be from a billion rand to no. We are ever feel that national legislation, and here we differ with the ANC's position, must be approved in a yeah, must be approved in a yeah, where all political parties are represented and subject to a third two thirds majority. You cannot, honourable chair, uh, require uh, these amendments uh, to be made with a two thirds majority win, and the legislation that follows uh, to be an ordinary. Uh, a show of hands in Parliament. Uh, Adama feels strongly that it should also be subject to a two-third uh, 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 majority or more. Maybe that will satisfy the EFF. And we wrote to the EFF and we told them, if that is the case and you have a second bite at the cherry when the legislation uh, is drafted and possibly approved in another nine months' time, then all the concerns of the EFF can, for example, be addressed. So I'm not making a plea to the EFF to support uh, uh, our uh, amendments, which is in line with the ANC amendments. I'm just asking them, don't waste three years of hard work, and then we have to start uh, from scratch again. And then in any case, uh, the, the governing party uh, can implement uh, section one, two, and three without much ado. And uh, you know it will just be by majority vote, whereas, if the EFF and other parties uh, support these uh, amendments, uh, then uh, certainly we have another bite at the cherry. We can look at it very closely and cross our T's and, and dot our I's. Uh, Honorable Chair, I did. I just want to raise the issue that Adama is, uh, you know, doesn't have a quarrel with land to be in possession of the state, but it must include this. It must not include religious land. And for Muslims, this is Waqaf land. 
it belongs to God and it can't belong to, with the, to the state. When Turkey took over the uh, Ottoman Empire ruling the Muslim world, they in fact uh, confiscated all Waqaf land and it belonged to the state. We don't agree with that position. And uh, we feel that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that that must be uh, taken uh, into, 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 con into consideration. Lastly, Honorable Chair, uh, you must understand, and I referred to you earlier on that wrong land was wrongfully dispossessed. And if there's no quarrel about the fact that the land was wrongfully uh, dispossessed, it must be returned either to the state or to the rightful owner. Uh, the uh, people that dispossessed it benefited it for many decades. And surely, you know, they can't get free. I'm not saying that we must put a rope around the neck three times, but what I'm saying is that they must uh, 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 make good. And that's why there must be a provision uh, uh, as far as Al Jama is concerned for reparations. Germany took 100 years to pay their reparations. We need to make sure that the reparations is earlier. In conclusion, Honorable Chair, the reason why Al Jama prefers legislation uh, to deal with these two sensitive matters, the steps, and the no compensation uh, is uh, 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 because uh, we want uh, uh, to fast track uh, uh, re uh, uh, re restitution. And on that particular note, Honorable Chair, thank you for giving a small party an opportunity uh, to represent uh, the views of his constituency and also to give me an opportunity as a member of parliament in my independent capacity to make some contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, Honorable Chair. Member. Chair. Yes. Honorable Gumede. Yeah, it, it looks as if uh, my, my, my day is not good today with this uh, uh, system. I'm, I'm perpetually muted. I can't even raise my head. I don't know why. Uh, I was wondering as well, because I don't see your hand, but uh, proceed. No, <clears throat> thanks very much, Chair. Let me start by saying, as part of the ANC, we support the presentation or the amendments as presented by Honorable Lesoma. I think that is the starting point. First and secondly, Chair, wish to say that, uh, you know, there is one basic question that you may ask as the Chair to all other parties. As much as it may be difficult with DA as well as ACDP, uh, because they are, they are saying that constitution must not be changed but it may make sense with um, EFF as well as Al Jama, because there is no other party that has in fact presented. The basic question that you need to ask them, each party, is there any party that's still willing to consider change in their presentation? Because it looks as if we, we are all in our own cocoons and no one is willing to give, perhaps no one is willing to take. So we may be moving around the settle, but not coming up with the way forward. If we agree today, as taking from your guidance when you made the opening speech, your, your opening input, we will then move to the second section with the understanding that no one now is going to move from his or her position in a form of parties. That's, that's, that's what I perhaps Chair, I'm, I'm presenting. Because if you understand what the DA has presented, there is a little bit of a confusion from what uh, Honorable Lesoma presented. I'm pretty sure that the, the, the custodianship that we presented is not the same as interpreted by uh, the DA. It's completely, definitely not the same. 
as well as on the part of uh, the EFF, I think there is a, a, a little bit of a, a, a misunderstanding, a confusion, in fact, on the land use as, much, as well as the, the forms of tenor. You know, the, the, there is that which, in fact, is mixed, which, in fact, if it can be well defined, perhaps the EFF may get a, a, a proper kind of a understanding of what we want to advance. You know, I was going to suggest, Chair, if ever parties are still willing to change their position, that we be forwarded with all questions that uh, the DA has asked. Because we are willing as ANC to consider what other parties, in fact, want to put forward. But it will be a futile exercise if DA as DA is not willing to change only probe on our presentation, but not going to change. It's, it's a useless of this thing, of energy, trying to do that. It may be a little bit better with EFF. We are swimming in the same pool, but going to different directions. So all what we need to do is to get perhaps uh, whichever to follow the direction that is better on the team than the one that is in fact getting us into big waves so that we get drowned. So my understanding, Chair, I, I wish to suggest that uh, let's ask each party, are they willing to move from their positions? We don't want to waste time. Procrastination is the thief of time. So we'll keep on doing this thing up until August is at the doorstep and we are not moving any further. We need to understand and move forward, prepare the documents that will be submitted to NA. So that will be my position, Chair. Thank you very much, but I support the position. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Gumede. Uh, I think uh, your contribution is very helpful, also helpful uh, to the Chair. Uh, because uh, I also wanted to just put, uh, before we come directly to what we have said, just to get some clarity. For instance, a formulation which says the state must take uh, legislative or other measures to promote land reform subject to available resources. My question is, if we say subject to available resources, what is the purpose of these resources? Because initially, that phrase would mean subject to the, uh, to the ability of the state to pay for the restituted land. So I would want people who can comment on the importance of that available resources or relevance thereof. Secondly, Al Jama raises the question of uh, religious uh, land. And I think uh, that is a very important uh, contribution because uh, if you read the case of uh, on Madimate about uh, mining, that there are certain mountains or caves that uh, African people hold as uh, sacred. Now, uh, if you say the land must go back to the state, meaning that also the sacred lands must go back to the state. What if the state then redistribute that sacred land to some people who don't believe in the same religious uh, sacred sites? How are you going to deal with that? Secondly, if we say that the whole land goes to the state, uh, are we saying that uh, uh, royal nations that wage the wars of uh, resistance, uh, who knew exactly which land belonged to them, they must again go and make a queue and ask for the state to approve their entitlement to that land? Why shouldn't it be that uh, people who were wrongfully dispossessed of their land and they can prove it, there's evidence. That land should go directly to them and not first to the state and back to them. 
Why, why follow such a tedious uh, uh, approach? Uh, uh, and also, uh, I wanted to hear more also from um, the EFF. But if you don't accept the multiple forms of tenure, are you saying that uh, all the people that own land now and all people who can prove that the land was taken away from them forcefully, should they not receive, be given their land straight out? Uh, sh should they wait for a process which will take all land to the state and then back to the people? Uh, uh, you know, I think we need to get clarity on all these things because if we do, I think we will find each other and it's possible for us to find each other. Honorable Murasete. Honorable Murasete. Thank you very much, Chairperson. And uh, thank you to honorable <laughs> members on this portfolio committee. Uh, Chairperson, thank you very much for your introductory remarks. The remarks which seeks to um, soften all and sundry so that at the end of the day, we get out of this all important meeting with a workable solution. The solution which South Africans are all waiting in abated breath and expecting us to assist and help them. Jefferson, as a start, let me indicate that uh, as the one of the leaders from the African National Congress, we stand by the input and the position as espoused by Honorable Lesom. We feel, standing where we are, if we were all from different parties, were to objectively reflect on that input of the African National Congress, because indeed we cannot enforce it to any person. We feel if we were to do so, Chairperson, we would go a long way in addressing the challenge that lies before us. It is very regrettable and it remains very unfortunate, Chairperson, that uh, there are still some amongst us and within this portfolio committee who still feel that there is nothing that went wrong through the colonial and apartheid repressive laws. I mean, if a person comes, like the DA would rise up and say, uh, it's as good as them having said, nothing must be changed. And that statement, I've said it before, and allow me to repeat it here and now, that is undermining the integrity of the fifth parliament, which parliament said, there is something wrong within the constitution. Section 25, of our constitution needs to be relooked by way of being amended. And we have moved around seeking all the oral and written submissions, majority of which registered and supported what parliament has said. So if we are given a task insurmountable as this, and the person comes and says, almost all subsections, it should not be amended. Nothing should be amended. Nothing should be amended. To me, it's not only even undermining, but it's, it looks like an insult to the mandate of the fifth parliament. And as a result, Chairperson, uh, I want to say is, Unfortunate, we are not. We don't have the whole world. I mean, the whole time in the whole world to keep on talking on this one. But at the same time, let me indicate this to the EFF, Economic Freedom Fighters. 
Uh, very regretful, very unfortunate. I want to say to the EFF, Honorable Shibambu, we need you as much as you need us. Hardened positions under these circumstances will neither assist or help you or help us, let alone the majority of South Africans who are looking at us as a final arbiter of a solution. Chairperson, as I conclude, I do not want to sound like a prophet of doom by what I'm going to say, but I want to say Parliament has given us this task because they love and trust us. The people of South Africa are looking at us because they love us and they trust us that we can do something better and on their behalf. Uh, the whole, all, almost all, everybody, the democratic processes uh, are also looking at us that these are the people who will be able to save the sinking boat because you cannot dispute the fact that indeed the land was brutally uh, disposed of its rightful owners. And now it's either we play the ball as the committee chairperson on behalf of parliament and on behalf of the people of South Africa or someone else at an another and an opportune position, opportunity will come in and play this ball. The fact of the matter remains our people were dispossessed of their land and how correctly we can take it back to them, it is in our hands. We either do it or our kids and the kids of our kids will come and correct this situation and maybe in a very brutal and unacceptable way. Thank you very much. I have said I apologize. I don't sound like a prophet of doom, but reality will prove me right one of these days. Thank you very much, Jefferson. Uh, Honorable Mbosetla, thank you very much. I think uh, one would agree with you that uh, uh, there was an original sin committed by the British colonialists and the Boer republics. And that original sin has to be addressed. So to say that there's no need to amend Section 25 is actually to say, let's leave with the original sin, and that will be a grave, grave injustice uh, to the people, the majority of the people of uh, 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 this country. Uh, I see Honorable Shibambo's hand. No, Chair, do you know the opportunism that always rears its head when we're discussing this is people who want to argue that by resisting state custodianship, they are protecting the rights of black people from owning the land and everything else there. One, that is also based on a wrong understanding of land tenure system in the traditional pre-colonial African context. So there's never been an instance in the entire African continent where there was titling of land. Land has always been held in custodianship in, in, by, by majority of the times by traditional systems and people will be given land user rights for different purposes. A lot of what is called traditional land, including the Ngonyama Trust land, is custodian land, which is under the custodianship of the state. And of course, there are limitations in terms of how security of tenure has been guaranteed in, in that communal land, which is owned by traditional leadership authorities. That is why parliament is correctly now dealing with the traditional land tenure uh, uh, bill, which is going to guarantee security of tenure for, for use purposes. So the custodial relationship between the land and the people is what defines majority of black people currently in South Africa. And to ignore that is, 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 is opportunism. But also, if you were to go to the records of the Department of Land Affairs and, and, and Rural Development, you'll realize that titled land, like black people, like Africans, have got less than 4% of the title deeds. That is a, a fact. 
and the descendants of the colonial settlers who got it because of that reality of colonial disposition have got more than 70% of the titles of the land surface of South Africa in terms of the arable land that is available. Let's leave the desert, which even if you take it there, the numbers even get worse because they control even the deserts of lands which are not being useful. So to then take it to, to say that no, this is a uh, problematic. Like majority of our people are staying in custodial land. That is a matter of fact. And if, if it's not custodial land by the state, it's in majority of cases custodial land by banks and financial institutions, which say to them that no, we will hold this on your behalf on the basis that you must give us a monthly payment. If you don't, we're going to take it and even evict you from that particular land. That is what defines South Africa and majority of black people now. And we're saying, let's legitimate this properly with an understanding that we must guarantee security of tenure in terms of what happens. And we are not going to just agree for the sake of agreeing. We're not going to do what the ANC did in Codesa of just sacrificing key principles for political expedience. That is not us. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not in a hurry for political expediency and political power and that, that no, let's just compromise, let's compromise so that we can move on in terms of all of these issues. We are raising a principled issue here that the manner in which land redistribution has been handled has been problematic on two fronts. One, because there were billions of rents that had to be paid to people who are currently occupying the land so that it can be given to the state and later on for redistribution purposes. But two, the piece-by-piece piece approach has not worked because even in some instances where the state wanted to pay money, the owners were saying, no, we don't want the money, we want to retain the land. Some would just charge unreasonable prices which were not regulated. That is why there was an attempt to introduce a surveyor general to value the, the, the cost of each land piece that is due for distribution. So, so, so when you talk about custodianship, like it's not black people who are going to be victims of that. They don't own the land. Go and read deeply into the land ownership patterns and statistics in South Africa, and you will realize that our people are not in ownership of the land. And anyone who assumes that they are in ownership of the land is, is, is problematic. We can now then change the framework and give them security of tenure, the right of inheritance, and, and, and there's, there's a tenure system called uh, t- uh, Security of Tenure in Perpetuity. In perpetuity. They use that in Singapore. The Chinese government, if you go and read the Constitution of the People's Republic of China, it says that all land is owned, in all urban land is owned by the state, and in the rural areas is owned by communal associations. But the Security of Tenure is guaranteed. They still attract the best investments in terms of physical investments. Here in South Africa, the state is custodian of all the land where special economic zones are located. And that is where majority of investments in South Africa happens. A bigger portion of the forestry land which is being utilized by these uh, huge corporations in the forestry forestry businesses are are state-owned lands. And people are utilizing that for commercial purposes. So to then juxtapose state custodianship and no investment to juxtapose state custodianship and no security of tenure is problematic. That is why we then say that the sections in the current constitution that says that we need to have proper legislation, a law of general application that guarantees tenure security is what must be done. That clarifies and contextualizes what is this custodianship and how do we guarantee tenure so that someone says that it is so, so that so that there is no space for a government official in the future who would say that no, we gave the right to your father, you therefore are not guaranteed access to this land because it was a father who get who got the right. It must not be like that. We can guarantee tenure in perpetuity in almost all of these instances, but then that will give us a proper space to redistribute the land equitably. The Freedom Charter, by the way, says that. All land must be redivided equitably amongst to those who work it. That is what it says. It's all, it says all land. Like it, it's written like that. 
it, it, it doesn't say that some land or some portions of land and everything is there. So those of you who are adherents of the Freedom Charter, if you do not want to subject all South Africa's land to a redivision for equal benefit to those who work it, you are now betraying your own founding values. Not founding values, your own constitutional principles because the Freedom Charter is in your constitution. Let's deal with it differently, Chair. Honorable Shibambu, can you assist us here? You know, uh, before the four trekkers left the Cape to cross the Val River into the old Transvaal, there were royal nations like the Wabenda, the Wapedi, the Walobedus, the Ndeveles, the Tswanas, who owned land. And there is proof, archived information of the land that they owned. Would you see anything wrong in going to those records and saying before the arrival of the fuel trackers, these people owned this land and therefore you simply restitute that land to them and guarantee uh, the security of tenure. Would you have a problem with that? No, 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 Chair. I think the, the historical account of a... Uh, so so uh, what I'm saying is that when the royalties that you're referring to here in South Africa or in this place we call South Africa now, were dispossessed of the land. They never had titles. There was no, the titling of land is a post-colonial phenomenon. That's a reality. So they had the land in, 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 in custodial control on behalf of their people. So when someone wanted to use land for grazing purposes, for farming purposes, that's why if they say that we've given this family land for agricultural purposes, but they've not been using it. There was no one who was going to say that, no, because it was belong, it belonged to my great-grandfather, it's, it's rightfully mine forever. It has never been like that. It has always in the proper decolonial understanding of land tenure in the African continent. The royalties were owning the land on behalf of the people. They were controlling the land on behalf of the people. And that is what we are seeking to achieve by having this custodial relationship. And of course, the reason why we say restitution should of the instruments is to provide ancestral land uh, and this I can prove that is my ancestral land and then the state which is now the custodian of that land can say no that's fine you can utilize it for whatever purpose that you want to use it but currently when you claim land for restitution purposes you are claiming from a white colonial settler who wants to demand money for you to gain access to your own ancestral land. And, and, and that is problematic. That is the context within which we are arguing all these issues, Chair. And, 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 and what we've been emphasizing throughout that. So the restitution component can still be applicable in those instances where they say that we can provide proof that these lands in Guachu belonged to this clan and this is how they were using it before. Then we can then say that in the redistribution consideration, you should. Okay. Are you done? Access to that particular land. Equally redistributed. Yes, Chair, you can, you can proceed. Okay, thank you. Uh, Honorable Dr. Melda. Yes, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Um, let me start off by saying I'm not aware of any colonial white settlers in South Africa, not one. I'm aware of South African citizens that have rights in terms of the current constitution. And I think we should keep that in mind. Honorable Chairperson, I'm not sure what we are busy with at the moment. Uh, we started this meeting this morning when you said it's time that we finalize the process. You started off by saying you were not interfering in the bilateral process, you were not part of that, and that we should come to a conclusion in terms of, and then you asked the different political parties to put their positions on the table and to indicate where they stand. And that's where we started off. The ANC did put their position. So did the DA, so did the EFF. <clears throat> now, I'm not sure what we are doing at the moment. Um, but before we get there, let me just go back one point. You started the meeting by saying um, the current law process, process has failed. It has not delivered. And if we do not do something now, it's going to plunge the country into a crisis. 
Now, Mr. Chairperson, you have made that point on numerous occasions during numerous meetings, and it's a controversial point because there's a difference of opinion about that. The, the point of departure that you take is that it's the fault of the legal process in South Africa that we have a problem in terms of land uh, reform and land restitution. But there's also a very strong opinion out there that it's not the fault of the law, it's not the fault of the constitution, it's not the fault of the provisions of the constitution, it's a failure of governance. That And we can discuss this, and there are strong views about this, that the failure is directly linked to government policy, and you can go and have a look in terms of, and all those uh, arguments were put in front of the committee through various uh, presentations made, in terms of the very small amount of money budgeted by the government over many years, in terms of internal incompetence in the departments, in terms of corruption, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that that is the reason for the failure and not the legal process or the provisions in the constitution. So, I'm not accepting as a fact a point of departure that says the legal process failed and if we do not amend the constitution, we are going to plunge the country into a crisis. I would suggest that is a point of view. It's not a fact as such, and I differ strongly with that. We've, I've listened to the different parties and honorable chairperson, we have not met now for two weeks. Why didn't we meet for two weeks? Because we gave time for bilaterals between the parties and the, question, the process of bilaterals has been going on for quite a while. And the parties have had extensive time to engage one another in bilaterals and to come up with compromises, etc. It's also true that you have made the point that we should put party differences or party uh, allegiance behind us and just come here together as individuals that act in the best interest of the country. I agree with that. I support that. However, we must be realistic and understand that each one of us as a member of this committee are doing so because we are elected representatives of the political parties that we represent. And political parties represent constituencies out, out there in our society, and the constituencies have different views and uh, uh, positions on this very difficult issue. Now, I, I'm, I'm listening to what we are doing. It, it sounds almost if we are going into a bilateral, we are talking about the history and we get history lessons. If you want to go down that route, I can also give you a history lesson about land in South Africa, and I don't think this is a place or the time to do so. But we are now venturing into that kind of thing. It almost sounds to me like we are now trying to have bilaterals in a formal meeting of this portfolio committee. I'm strongly of the view, and I've listened to the different parties. From the Freedom Fund Plus's point of view, we've made the proposal that if we do want to tamper with Section 25, if that's then the case, We've made a proposal that section subsection one should be amended by starting off before anything else to acknowledge the positive rights of everyone, of every citizen to should be able, of not every citizen, everyone should own property. We've made that in a written proposal way back. I've listened to all the political parties. It's quite clear to me that we are not on the same page, that the different parties do not agree. Um, and I'm not going to repeat everything that was said by my colleagues. Um, I've listened to the ANC's proposals. I cannot support those proposals. The whole question of custodianship is something that I do not support. The Freedom Front Plus does not support the notion of custodians, custodianship. There are more questions than answers if you look at the proposals. Um, what it means, how it's going to be, what are the responsibilities of the state, none of those things are clear. And it's no use to say in terms of an interpretation of members of the committee that we think it means this or that or the other. Constitutions and constitutional provisions does not work that way. It doesn't work that way. The constitution needs to be clear. It needs to put the principles out there and set guidance in terms of how we're going to operate. So with all due respect, Chairperson, we can continue as is, and we will have more meetings like this. But my earnest appeal and my proposal would be, let's finish this once and for all now. We've heard the position of the ruling party. Let the ruling party put its proposals to the committee, let the committee take a decision, and let us then take this to the House. And that is how far we can go. It doesn't make sense to continue in the vein that we are doing so at the moment, and trying to, I don't know if, what we're doing, I don't know if you're trying to have some more bilaterals in a, in a meeting like this, it's not working. Um, the, the different parties, the, the Democratic Alliance has made their position clear, we've made our position clear, the EFF has made their position abundantly clear, and so has the ANC. 
So I would really, in all earnest, it's time to get some f finality in this process. And I would appeal to the ANC to put their positions, let the committee vote on them and take that to the House and let the House decide. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Honorable uh, Melda. Uh, I would suggest that uh, we be patient with ourselves for a while because uh, I have no doubt that uh, we are going to find uh, each other. But I think you are raising a very important uh, uh, issue here, uh, which uh, maybe Honorable Shibambo can deal with it. Uh, if you say there must be state custodianship of all land. Uh, do you mean that uh, even those who privately own the land now, who communally own the land, uh, should hand over what they have back to the state and the state should then redistribute? Or what, 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 what are you saying? Honorable Shwambo? No, 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 Chair. So, so I, I, I had made a plea and we have made actually like a lot of substantial written submissions on the custodial relationship uh, of the state to the land. And, and we, can, we can forward that uh, like later on so, so that all members of the committee can be able to engage with that in deeper detail. Now, this is what happens. And the, the, the Water Act of 1998 the Minerals and Petroleum Resources Development Act of 2002 deals with the issue of custodianship of the state and, and says that custodianship is not the same as nationalization. So nationalization will be a, an instance where the state will take all the land and, and use it for whatever purpose and can, can put you there and remove you and all sorts of other reasons. But the custodian relationship means that the state is holding in custody. It's just, it's, a, it's safekeeping for everyone else who needs to use the land. And because there is land that is in current use for residential purposes, for religious purposes, for industrial purposes, for agricultural purposes, for, for recreational purposes, for a variety of purposes, those land user rights that people are, are guaranteed now through titles or through whatever mechanisms that they have, have to be converted, obviously. You cannot say that now, because the state is a custodian of all land, they're going to evict people and then they must go into a queue to then say, I'm, I'm now applying. It must be automatic conversion of those to say that you must appreciate that the land that you are occupying, which is in use, in terms of what is happening, is converted. And then that then gives you space of all other land which is in the ownership in terms of the statistics of majority white people. Of the, and, the, and the consequence of white people owning the land is due to the fact that there was colonial disposition of black people of the land. They were not allowed, they were removed forcefully in many instances. Then you then gain access to that land for public purposes and in a public interest, and which, of course, in the constitution says that the public interest includes the state's commitment to land reform and land redistribution. So that is the context within which this is being framed. And, and the good thing about this is that we have got adequate jurisprudence in the South African context because we have done that with water, we have done that with minerals. The mineral rights that were expropriated or taken from the private shareholders were worth trillions of US dollars. But the state was able to take that to be under the custodianship of the state without paying a single cent for that. Uh, and, and the constitutional court approved that to say that it's a necessary deprivation which must then give people access to all of these mineral resources, whoever needs that under certain conditions. And we are saying that let us do to lend what has been done to the mineral resources so that we can gain equal access. Any other model has not worked and, and, and the scientific proper diagnosis of what has previously happened tells us that it will not be successful if we were to continue with the piece by piece expropriation of pieces of land without having it under the custodianship of the state for equal redistribution. That is what the Freedom Charter says, that all land must be redivided to those who work it. 
Uh, honorable members, <clears throat> following on what uh, uh, Honorable Dr. Melda is saying, uh, I think we have had one another. And what remains is that we must couch the different positions uh, in terms of uh, text. Why don't we say then that uh, we asked the legal services people uh, to look at what the ANC is saying and then uh, formulate it uh, uh, in, as, as a text, look at what uh, Honorable Shibambo uh, is saying, formulate that as a text, and then the DA wants uh, financial implications. But uh, I think you can deal with financial implications inside the, the constitution. Uh, and therefore it means that uh, they want the section 25 to stay uh, because uh, there are no financial institutions. But uh, we can't deny them the right to, if they want to reformulate any subsection uh, to do so. So why would you agree that uh, we asked a legal uh, department to say, you know, on section 25-7, the EFF have some proposals and that uh, those proposals should be uh, formulated in the form of a text. And then the ANC on their proposal of multiple ownership, they formulate that. So when we come back, we look at uh, the latest formulations by uh, all parties, and then uh, we put these matters to a vote and see uh, how far we can go. Uh, can I get uh, comments on that? If it makes sense or if it doesn't make sense, uh, suggest something that makes sense. Uh, Honorable Lesuma. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Uh, uh, all what you have said, it makes sense. But I, I would like also the committee to be mindful that uh, we came prepared that we were going to finalize the text in terms of a, the committee making a decision. That's one. Two, Chair, uh, uh, we must note that or observe that some of the political parties like our ANC, we have also spoke to section five, subsection five, which was not a uh, part of the bill that went out for public participation. Therefore, Chair, uh, I'll skip the first one because we have done it. And uh, probably if, 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 if we had, uh, I will agree with you and respect your decision to say that uh, I thought we were going to approve today the text as presented, whether through vote or through some certain means, but uh, and, and ensure that we publicize the other clauses that uh, we have spoken to from the 5th of July to the 23rd of July of this year. Then after that, we reassemble and uh, for consideration of the submissions on the 29th to the 30th of July. And then uh, on the 5th and the 6th of August, which is the first week of August, we approve the report that will go to the house for adoption and be ATC. Because if we, we, the more we drag it in terms of the day's chair, we have been given ample time for us to also to deal with other clauses, which also include up to uh, sub clause um, nine, that includes seven, that includes five, that includes four. So I, I, I also would like to seek guidance because I, I, I was going to make that proposal without knowing that we're not going to agree today. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Honorable Lusuma, <clears throat> if you recall, uh, when we last met, we said that uh, parties must go back and reflect on their uh, positions and come back with the revised uh, positions. Uh, and therefore, uh, whilst I accept uh, uh, your 
uh, position, but I think it would be premature that uh, we finalize the text today because today we're supposed uh, to consider the revised uh, positions. So if you could bear with us that uh, instead of finalizing the text today, we do that at the next meeting and follow your proposals at that stage. Does that uh, go down well with you? Uh, I'm covered, Chair, yeah, appropriate, yes, which means we'll meet uh, through your good sir, Chair, is that we'll meet next week uh, so that also in terms of the time frames also are within the, that bounds. Yes, Thank you very yeah. much. Okay, fine. And then... Uh, yeah, just, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah Chairperson. Yes. Yeah, I wanted just to support your, your view, but it's good that uh, Honorable Lesuma was able to retract and in, in your support. I wanted to support your position that we cannot just round it up today, and then uh, we still have got some few minutes next week. We can still meet because there was another level of persuasion which I saw today. People are not so hardened. They can still repent, and then we are able to have a common understanding. Thank you, Prof. No, thank you for that observation. That's the view that I take on that matter. So uh, let's give people a chance uh, for re repentance. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Kawa. Uh, Chair. Honorable Kawa. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, Chair. Uh, I, I'm, I'm covered by yourself uh, because I, I wanted to, uh, uh, you know, um, emphasize the point that um, Honorable Lesoma made that um, we agree on one text now, uh, publish it, because we'll still have another round of discussion. And when we consider uh, the public um, uh, representations or the public submissions. So if, for, for instance, today we say, okay, it's fine, um, just to take us closer to the final step, let's agree on the ANC text. That's, that, that is my suggestion. If we say, to, let's agree on the, on the ANC text, publish it. Um, in other words, in publishing it, we we'll publish the whole text and in uh, all provisions, um, and then call for uh, written submissions. And then once we, we have received those written submissions, we deliberate further. But at least that deliberations would be the last deliberations. And if, and if we still cannot find it uh, one another, then that would be the, then we'll then consider that we submit reports to the house that represents uh, not one position because there's no agreement, but different positions um, or whatever report that um, will submit. So, so, so I'm, I was actually looking at us coming closer now to the to to to, to the last last leg of our of our engagement. Agree today. Uh, we we'll publish, receive written submissions, and have an, and have another set of another round of discussions, and then we decide on the way forward then. But if you say, let's not do that today, let's do it next week, I'm still I'm still fine with that. Thanks, okay. Chair. No, thank you, Honorable Kaba, for your understanding. And uh, I think uh, I want to go back to something that Honorable Gumede said. Honorable Gumede persuasively said, uh, parties must indicate whether they are prepared to move uh, from their original positions or, or not. Uh, and I think uh, this, uh, if we, as you agree, Honorable Kaba and Honorable Suma, if you agree that uh, we pack this matter until next Friday, and that will give us an opportunity, will give all political parties an opportunity to consider what Hon Honorable Gumede uh, has said. So no one may then later claim that they were not given an opportunity to uh, refine their positions. So I therefore want to suggest that uh, let's allow uh, the EFF, they said they will submit something on state ownership because uh, I think that uh, the state ownership, custodianship, the way they put it, suggest that uh, even those who have title to land now, 
uh, who have acquired it legitimately, they must transfer their title to the state and therefore that they don't accept that there will be uh, public ownership, private ownership, communal ownership, cooperative ownership, and we must give them uh, an opportunity to go and clarify those things and come back next uh, Friday. And uh, also the DA, when they say that uh, they want financial implications, they must tell us, how do you use the constitution to deal with those matters? Because national legislation uh, is the one that uh, can deal with the nitty gritties, not the constitution. So uh, we will give them space to go back and tell us, how do they see the constitution dealing with the financial implications uh, uh, in, in, in this case? So, um, also, uh, the EFF on section 25 uh, 7 uh, would expect that they formulate something concrete. So, we engage with it so that uh, next week we re finalize uh, and then uh, what must be publicized and uh, advertised for public comment. So, I think we are moving uh, somewhere, though slowly, but we are getting there and uh, let's be patient with. Uh, one another, these matters are capable of a resolution and we will have to resolve them if we want uh, uh, the best interest of South Africa to prevail. Thank you very much. Any other? Uh, oh, I see Honorable Kaba, Honorable Murwa uh, Seta, uh, are those old hands or new hands? Yeah, it's an old hand, uh, my uh, chair, my apologies. Okay, thank you. Uh, Comrade Murasa, yeah. is that old? It's an old one. Oh, it's an old one. Yeah, uh, Chair. Yes. May I uh, make a comment? Yes, certainly. Chair, uh, may I make a, a, a suggestion here? Firstly, let me say, let's not forget that uh, the al Jama said they will as well submit so it means there will be three concrete submissions okay okay y y yes yeah. your instruction says uh, the officials are to go back, look at what the, the, the EFF is saying and develop a text. They will do the same with, with, with the ANC. So it suggests that they will have to do the same with uh, al -Jama. Yes. But I want to make a proposal that the chair further says, after all those texts, <laughs> the three of them, they develop the fourth one, which will be a compromise or a combination of the three, so that in their own interpretation, what exactly they could come up with and then present that to us, so that at least in their capable minds, they may come up with uh, some of the positions that may be interpreted as more or less could be a compromise position for all the three of us. I'm saying three deliberately because other parties are not submitting. So that's my view, Chair, that out of the three, we ask them to develop the fourth one, which will be the combination of the three. And let's see, let's debate that. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Gumede, I think uh, uh, you are spot on. Uh, I really fully agree with what, with what you are saying. Can I say something, Chair? Oh, yes. Yes. No, no thank you very much, uh, Chair. I have a slight um, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, amendment to make to, to that suggestion. Mm -hmm. Because 
<clears throat> the reason why I'm making this amendment, we have been down that road where uh, the legal section uh, produced um, what it considered uh, as a compromised document. Then. I think that process took us to where we are now, right? And I don't think we should uh, go back uh, and do that again. Now the process is party political. It's at our level. Let's not let's let's the 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 the, the, the administration must um, uh, you know uh, take what is agreed upon uh, and couch it into the language that is not inconsistent with the constitution. Let's not let's not invite them into into this terrain. You know, and um, uh, that's the reason why. Uh, uh, my uh, Lesoma suggestion, which you chair supported, and uh, was supported also by the Freedom Front. Freedom Front says, uh, Dr. Muda says, look, place the, the suggestion, the, the proposal of the ruling party on the table. Let us vote on it, right? And, and, and but as we vote, we must vote, I think that was uh, Lesoma's suggestion, as we vote, we must vote knowing that we st will still have another round of discussion. We just want to move to the next step. The next step is uh, now publishing the document and um, and 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 um, and considering publishing the document, receiving a public uh, submission, and considering the public submissions. In other words, what we are engaged with now, we are still going to engage with when we consider. Uh, the, the 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 public submissions. So 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 I think the suggestion is that let's move a step further. That sub step further further is next week we meet we we'll say okay because we still have not uh, come closer, but let's publish the ANC document agreed. If we agreed, then we move forward on those basis, and so that on the on the basis of it we invite public submissions and then consider it then. Once, if we still still were not persuaded, if, if if we are still not persuaded, then after having received those inputs from the public, we are still not persuaded. We we'll then decide what then do we do next? What report do we take to the house? You know, right now we can't discuss on the report we take to the house until we cross the cycle. That cycle is publication and receiving further further input on the bill. Thank you so much. I thought that was the proposal which are seconded by the by the Freedom Front. Thanks. Uh, honorable uh, members. Oh, okay, Chair. Honorable Gumede. Chair, yes. on, on the basis of what uh, Honorable Klaba is saying, especially he says that this is a, a, a political venture, let us not draw in the officials. It's a political terrain then I stand then to withdraw uh, my proposal so that we no, move forward. No, before you withdraw, I think what you have said and what Honorable Kawa is saying can be reconciled. Uh, Honorable Kawa is right to say we have now entered the political terrain and we have heard what the politicians are saying but the role of the parliamentary legal services is to give us technical support. And therefore, I would suggest that uh, the ANC has a text which they believe can be published. And the uh, EFF have a text which they think can be published. The Al Jama, the same. That those texts from the three uh, uh, parties that you have correctly identified must be taken to the technical uh, parliamentary legal services so that they can look at that as technicians, not to interfere with the politics of the matter, but to look at the technical aspects. And then next week when we meet, we will look at the political inputs as uh, you know modified by the technicians. So they are not interfering with the political position, but they really just uh, look at the technical aspects of that whole thing. So I, I, I still believe that uh, what you proposed, uh, Honorable Gumede, Gumede stands uh, subject to the fact that, uh, uh, you know, the technical people 
will not interfere with the political inputs. Honorable Kawa, are you able to follow what I'm saying? Chair, hello? Uh, yes, hello, Chair. I'm saying that let's not take away the right of the technical staff uh, to look at what the politicians have produced because uh, at the end of the day, everything has got to be technically uh, correct. No, no, okay. I was actually talking about the document uh, for publication purposes. We still yeah. have this round of discussion where we receive further advice from them as well. All yeah. right? Yeah. And um, that we, we, we have uh, 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 positions, right? But I thought I, I was, we were actually said maybe let's do that when we meet next week to say okay. which one do we, which one of this draft do we publish as representing the minimum, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the minimum we publish so that for purposes of receiving further inputs, you know, into the process, and uh, and then engage once again. At least that engagement will be a final engagement that it will then be paving the way to the house you know, for the preparation of the report that will be submitted to the house. Maybe the report that will be publishing would actually be saying, look, we don't agree on any one of them, but we are submitting all three for the house to make a determination. But now, because we are still going to go through the public participation process, let's agree on the minimum. And okay. the, that minimum is the document we are placing on the table. Okay. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Honorable Kawa, for clarifying that uh, Honorable members, uh, I think we have uh, a clear way forward. Uh, next week, we will then consider the final texts that have to be publicized. And Honorable, uh, Honorable uh, Lesuma gave us a, a clear framework. Uh, and I think that uh, she should also refine that because that is what uh, is going to guide us uh, next Friday. And uh, thank you very much, honorable member members. I think uh, the meeting should adjourn now. Thank you, Chair. Have a good weekend, colleagues. Uh, same, same to you and keep up uh, the good work, uh, honorable Suma, and all, all of you. Thank you, Chair. Have a wonderful uh, weekend, comrades, colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those gaps are closed, but I am close to the meeting is adjourned. Recording stopped.